So hello everyone. Money. Money is the most loved and the most feared term of modern times. Most of the people I know just want a lot of money, but they don't actually know what it is and how it works. In this age of information, almost everything has been touched by the digital revolution, and so is the case with money. So today I'm going to speak about something related to digitalization of money under the topic cryptocurrency, blockchain, Bitcoin, the Bitcoin protocol, and the future of digital money. But before starting with the future of digital money, the Bitcoins and, and all the mentioned topics, I would first like to speak about the present of money and how it has evolved over the past. So long before having the paper currency as a medium of exchange, we used to have something we know as the barter system. The barter system basically worked on a situation of complementary needs or coincidence of wants, which basically means that in order to buy something from person A, you would have to sell something to person A, which would be of value to person A, and person A would be ready to trade his commodity with your material. So let's take an example. Let's say you want to buy 10 kilograms of mangoes and you have a cow to trade it with. The first thing that you would do is to find a person who has 10 kilograms of mangoes and is ready to trade it with your cow. If you find that person, great. But what if you find a person who only has 5 kilograms of mangoes? Are you going to cut your cow in half to do that trade? Well, obviously not because then it will lose its value, which brings us to an important point about modern money, which is divisibility. Modern money is divisible in nature, which also brings us to a point where we realize that cow is not a good form of money, right? So there were more issues with the barter system which led to its failure. The most important one was the missing common measure of value. There was nothing common to measure everything against. So everything would have to be weighed against everything else, which would lead to a cumbersome financial system. As the society advanced, we moved on to more complicated financial systems, which were based on gold and silver as a medium of exchange. Gold had all the good properties of currency. It was divisible, it was durable, and it had the prop the property of fungibility. So what fungibility basically means is that your $100 bill should have the same value as my $100 bill, which was the case with gold. The only problem with gold was that it was not very transferable in nature. It is very difficult to carry huge chunks of gold with you to market daily for commercial activities. This led to the rise of the modern banking system. In the modern banking system, what the banks did was they asked you to give your gold to them and in return, they would print currency notes for you, which would be a proof that you hold such and such amount of gold in your banks. And then you would be able to do the commercial activity with those currency notes. But this led to development of another issue, which is the issue of trust. Now, as the global economy started expanding and with global globalization all the countries started you know doing business with other other countries and they started changing their laws they started uh, changing their banking systems in order to uh, you know be more cooperative with other with other countries the issue of trust started rising and in order to come to compete with other economies and to go over this issue of trust all the laws were changed to suit certain economies. Which brings me to this. Today's financial structure somewhat looks like the Heath-Robinson contraption. So what the Heath-Robinson contraption basically is that 
It is a situation where a complex mechanism is created to solve a very basic problem. In this case, to push a television button. So this is the exact case with our financial system. A very complicated financial system has been created so that we have the trust and that we can transfer value or money over a geographical location. A very fine example of the Heath-Robinson contraption in the modern financial system is the remittance industry. Well, let's say you live in the United States and you have saved, uh, let's say, $20,000 over a year and you want to send it back to your family in India. You would have to do it through the remittance industry. And in that process, you would end up paying a certain amount of money to the intermediate bank or the company that is doing the transaction for you. The remittance industry alone currently has the value of over $600 billion. And this industry is doing a yearly transaction of over $450 billion only to the developing countries. All this only for trust, right? So the trust that we have in banks, the trust that we have in governments, and we are paying so much money for that. So what can we do to solve this problem of trust without paying any money or without having these third party governments or banks in between? After the 2008 economic crisis, a mathematician programmer or a group of mathematician programmers by the pseudonym Satoshi Nakamoto proposed this white paper which speaks about a protocol related to cryptography for the creation of a new type of currency, a digital currency, which many know today as the Bitcoin. The Bitcoin basically is to currency as email was to the postal system. It is a peer-to-peer -peer network. It solves many issues. It is fast. It is reliable. The reliability factor comes from the mathematical algorithm which deals with the system. So how does Bitcoin work? Well, for regular people like us, Bitcoin is still just a mode of payment. It's just a currency. It's just a piece of software or an application in your mobile or your computers. But the amazing thing about Bitcoin is the underlying technology behind Bitcoin, which is the blockchain. The blockchain is a system, is a vast, globally distributed system of ledgers. So now we have two terms to explain. One is the blockchain and the second is a ledger. So a ledger is nothing but a financial record like this one. A ledger is used to keep track of accounts in banks. But what if all the computers in the world came together to support this global ledger, we could store all the transactions we made in a secure manner. That leads to a blockchain. A ledger is created whenever a transaction occurs. So when I send you money through my Bitcoin, then a transaction occurs and a ledger is created. And such ledgers are compiled one over the other and in 10 minutes, in every 10 minutes, precisely 10 minutes, a block of information is created. And this has been going on since 2009. So in every 10 minutes, a block of information is created and certain bitcoins are released into the system. Just like gold is mined, when we put people to work to mine gold, in, in a certain period of time, certain amount of gold is released. But with time, the release of gold decreases, right? because the mine would only have so much gold to release. Same is with Bitcoins. The current rate of release of Bitcoins is 12.5 Bitcoins per 10 minutes. So whenever a block is released, 12.5 Bitcoins are released. So in 10 minutes, a block is created. And in the next 10 minutes, one more block is created. In the next 10 minutes, one more block is created. And hence, is created a blockchain. A chain of blocks which stores all the financial activity which is being conducted all over the world in 
Bitcoin blockchain. Now, why is this so secure? The Bitcoin blockchain is by far the most secure technology and it is the technology that is going to change the world forever. Remember what happened when the internet arrived? This is exactly what is happening when the blockchain The blockchain is so unhackable. In order to hack a block in the blockchain, let's say you want to pull out some bitcoins from the blockchain. So for that, you would have to make a change in a ledger and make that transaction diverted to your wallet, right? But in order to hack a ledger in a blockchain, a person would need to not only hack that block, but the entire blockchain in the industry of commerce ever created in that particular blockchain, all with the highest levels of encryption on all the computers around the world simultaneously, which is not possible because it is more than 100 times the power of Google, which is today. So who controls the Bitcoin network? No one controls the Bitcoin network which is the exact point of having the Bitcoin network to not have a third party in between. So like no one controls the internet, no one controls email. Similarly, no one controls the Bitcoin blockchain. What language was Bitcoin created in? The initial version of Bitcoin, which was created by Mr. Satoshi Nakamoto, was created in C++. And how do I acquire Bitcoins, which is the, the most important thing because now we know that when Bitcoins were released in 2009, they were only valued at a few cents. And today, the value of Bitcoin is over $1,600 a piece, right? So I, I'll tell you, one of my friends, he purchased 12 Bitcoins in 2011 for a dollar a piece. So at that time, we had to pay 600 rupees to purchase those Bitcoins. And those 12 Bitcoins are today valued at 10 lakh rupees, right? from 600 to 10 lakh rupees in six years. And this is only going to increase because the graph of the Bitcoin value is similar to the graph of the Amazon.com website, which was initially deemed as a fraud website, which was initially, you know, the, the, investor wanted, the investors wanted to back off because no one was supporting the internet revolution initially. But now we cannot imagine living without the internet. So what can I do with Bitcoins? Similarly, you have heard about the app which is called Paytm, right? And you must have made transactions using Paytm. Similarly, you can use Bitcoin to make transactions in many parts of the world, especially in the remittance industry. So Bitcoin is uh, making it the remittance industry because it is cutting commissions, right? So over 300,000 companies as of now are accepting payments through Bitcoin, including Microsoft. What are the alternatives of Bitcoin? So Bitcoin is not the only piece of technology which has been made on the blockchain, just like Amazon.com is not the only website on the internet. Other projects have also been created. This is Ethereum. Ethereum is like the silver to gold, like the silver to Bitcoin. Ethereum was created by Mr. Buterin when he was only 19 years old. And the Ethereum solves many major purposes. The Ethereum is not only a currency. Ethereum also has projects which make governments accountable. So it is not only an internet of information now. It is soon going to become an internet of value. Internet was able to distribute information. Now it would be able to distribute prosperity because of the blockchain network. This is, again, one more type of uh, coin, as you must say, like the Bitcoin, Ripple. Ripple is used for bank transactions. Now, the most important question, what is the future of Bitcoin? And can it die? Well, you know, I, I, I have been in the field of digital marketing since the last five years. And uh, I've been doing good. So when I have 
conversations with my father or my mother regarding business. I tell them that, or I actually ask them, where were you when the internet revolution was happening? Why did you not invest in the internet revolution when it was happening? And they generally do not have answers to that. And most of the people do not have the answer to that question. What if you would have taken a step ahead and made the first Amazon.com? The same is the case with the Bitcoin network. Many experts in finance predicted that the few entrepreneurs who have great knowledge about finance are going to buy Bitcoins when they'll be worth a few cents. More would be buying these Bitcoins when they'll be worth $50. More Americans would be buying Bitcoins when they'll be worth $100. Rest of the people in developed countries would be buying Bitcoins when they reach $1,000. And in countries like India, people would be buying Bitcoins when they reach $10,000 a piece. A Bitcoin is an immensely useful piece of technology because Bitcoin has all the good properties of the current money that we have. Bitcoin is divisible. Bitcoin is found by bits. One million bits is one Bitcoin. And a hundred million bits, a uh, hundred million Satoshis also make up a Bitcoin. So you can spend up to 100 million part of a Bitcoin. So even if Bitcoin reaches the value of $100 million a piece, you would be able to spend a dollar in Bitcoins. So what are you waiting for? You must today invest in the growing cryptocurrency market. Can it die? Well, according to a website, Bitcoin has already died 157 times in the past. So 158th won't matter much. Thank you so much.